So good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. It's 22 December uh, 2020. Uh, this, in fact, is our last webinar of 2020. So we're all meriting to take part in the final 2020 webinar article resource sharing requests in Alma Networks. We have with us all the way from Beit Shemesh, he's joining us, Beit Shemesh Israel. Moshe Schechter, kind enough to take time out of his very busy schedule for us. Uh, I will be monitoring the chat. If anyone has questions or comments in the middle, send them into the chat. And periodically, I'll be interrupting Moshe to tell him that we have some questions and or comments. So without further ado, Moshe, I am giving you the presenting rights. Make sure you speak loudly. And you are the presenter. Take it away, Moshe. Thank you. Let's share and we are ready to go. Okay, so thank you for joining us. See you, Moshe. Okay, can you see my screen now? We see your screen and we hear you. All right, okay. So thank you for joining us uh, for the for the session. Um, we will take the uh, this hour to talk about article resource sharing requests in Alma Networks. Um, this is intended to discuss scenarios of article requests that are fulfilled in digital format on document delivery services. Um, while Alma has initially mostly been implemented for physical resource sharing, uh, there are lots of features that have been developed over time, some of which have just been deployed in recent releases that have to do with uh, supporting scenarios of requesting articles um, and supplying them in digital format. We would like to uh, walk through the different uh, scenarios, demonstrate a workflow, uh, and as much as time permits us uh, to try to look into the uh, different options that we have there. I've labeled this uh, uh, resource sharing, article resource sharing in Alma Networks. Uh, that is to say, we'll mostly be uh, discussing uh, Alma to Alma, workflows where a borrower and lender uh, are uh, both Alma. We will also be referring to scenarios where one of the um, uh, sides in this uh, workflow, either the borrower or lender is not an Alma institution, uh, but this is mostly about Alma to Alma peer to peer uh, resource sharing um, so that where there is a resource sharing network, uh, either formal using a network zone or not uh, a formal network that is using network zone, in either case, um, requesting articles and supplying them as a document delivery service can be done using the Alma tools that we'll take a look at. Um, this, of course, there are other options uh, for managing article requesting beyond the Alma network, uh, such as the Rapid ILL solution, which is a wider broker that takes you beyond the Alma network. And of course, uh, the uh, uh, future Rapido solution, uh, which is yet a wider solution that is a, a global resource sharing uh, solution, but we are here to talk about the peer-to-peer, -peer, the Alma Classic peer-to-peer -peer, uh, resource sharing networks, but in the context of article document delivery. So that's just to uh, talk about um, what it is that we are going to be discussing. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the different options, the topologies, and of course, demonstrate the workflow. And again, as much as time permits us, uh, we'd like to take a look at the configurations as well. Generally, there are two basic uh, workflows. Uh, the first one, and the one that we will be demonstrating in this demo, is where we have a borrower, um, Alma, uh, and a lender that may be Alma or may not be um, an Alma lender, so that the file, the article that is supplied by the lender, is supplied as an email with an attachment. And again, this is assuming that the lender is not an Alma institution. Therefore, the file itself can be sent to Alma as an email with an attachment, and we'll take a look at the workflow that the borrower takes in order to fulfill this request. Um, so the process will be, as we'll demonstrate, a borrower placing a request, the lender fulfilling this request. We will demonstrate this with an Alma lender, um, which will demonstrate a scenario where Alma may be the lender of a non-Alma borrower, um, and therefore supplying the resource as an attachment in an email. The workflow of the lender will be 
using will create two uh, indications, two uh, uh, um, um, notifications that go out to the borrower side. One is, of course, the ship message, which ideally would go in an ISO message um, and uh, update the borrower side automatically, uh, but also the email that will have that attachment, that uh, digitized uh, document. Being now that this email is received on the borrower side, the uh, library staff on the borrower side has to upload um, that file into Alma. And from there, uh, Alma will trigger an email to the patron that will be able to access that resource as uh, using a, a secured authenticated link. Uh, and that will be the full workflow. So from the borrower perspective, if the resource sharing request will be updated by the ship message, the email will contain that file, the library staff will be able to upload that file into Alma, and that will automatically trigger an email to the patron for accessing that uh, file as we will demonstrate. Where both sides are Alma, if the network is, uh, the resource sharing network is all Alma, Bohr and Lender are all Alma, the workflow can be made simpler because then when the lender uploads the file, that can trigger a message to Alma that will, on the borrower side, automatically trigger an email to the uh, patron, and the patron will get that same email with the same link, uh, but uh, use the secure link to access that resource that is stored on the lender side temporary repository. Uh, so it is a, a quicker workflow, not requiring that step of the library staff uploading a received file, because the file is sent through the Alma platform and therefore, Alma on the borrower side knows how to access that resource without anybody on the library staff on the borrower side having to take any action for that uh, to happen. And I hope as much as time permits us, we'll be able to take a look at the configurations. Um, what we will demonstrate is the longer workflow. So we'll be using both Alma, borrower, and lender uh, in order to demonstrate the all aspects of the workflow but again, in an Alma to Alma network, it is possible to skip that part of the um, borrower side upload actions. But the rest is pretty much the same. The interfaces are the same. So the demo that we will see um, will describe uh, both workflows. And again, you can just skip some of the steps if you're using this type of uh, setup. Okay, so quickly running through, uh, uh, through this, uh, there's another um, a piece of information I want to share with you, and that is the uh, first step of the process um, before the request is actually sent. As you all know, um, Alma utilizes a locate process that enables the borrower side to automatically create a rota only of the lenders that own the resource that I'm about to uh, request, um, so that uh, time is not wasted on sending requests to lenders that don't have that resource. The locate process um, has been developed over time um, for doing searches across the Alma lenders or the non-Alma lenders. And when the requested resource is an article, um, the locate process uh, is not able to run at the article level. It is actually doing a journal search, which is obviously not as accurate as we would like it to be. What I'd like to uh, emphasize is that the limitations that I've just mentioned is relevant only when the lender owns that article in physical format. So if the lender has a physical uh, journal, physical issues uh, with uh, um, the articles, uh, then Alma will not be able to locate it down to the article level. But if the lender owns that article in electronic format, then Alma on the borrower side can identify that the Alma lender um, has that specific article and will not send a request just because the lender has a journal. It will send a request only if the lender has that specific article. And the way this is done is that Alma actually util utilizes internal uh, linking, uh, link resolving um, uh, methods that enable, as we all know, link resolvers identify uh, whether the specific coverage, the specific publication date, specific article, um, is owned, Alma utilizes internally that, those same tools and is able to identify uh, that the lender has that specific article in electronic format. So 
the locate and the automatically created rota on the borrow side can identify lenders that have that specific article electronically and that of course creates a much more accurate uh, rota uh, and saves time for both the borrower and the lender so we will demonstrate that we'll take a look at how that uh, works and as we have a lot to cover um, i'll run right quickly on uh, to take a look at that uh, workflow uh, what i have here is a recorded uh, um, a demo of that workflow both of what we'll see is already available on your um, December release environments. Some of it will be available after you come back from the holidays uh, on your January release. So I will mention uh, those elements of the workflow that are not yet in your development environments, but are almost there. Um, and I will be demonstrating that, as I mentioned, on an Alma to Alma uh, workflow, Bore and Lender. I'll be using our standard demo environments. So you will see a board that is the uh, Alma University and a lender that is the Open University. These are the demo environments that we use for uh, our user sharing uh, demos. Um, and again, it can be true with uh, um, Alma that is a bore or Alma that is a lender. Uh, and it doesn't mandate that Alma is on both uh, ends to demonstrate the longer workflow, as I called it. So let's quickly run into it and take a look. I'll be using for this demo, um, this uh, UN uh, resource, United Nations resource law, the C bulletin, something that is published every year. Um, so um, there are volumes here for every year, um, going a few decades uh, back. I have a lender that has access to this uh, um, law, the C bulletin from 2010. So we will see a borrower that is able to request articles and a lender that is able to supply them starting from um, 2010. So I will uh, take the article here. This is from their um, site, uh, this specific article, which is from 2018. Um, and I'll start a process of searching and requesting this. I'm going into Primo, I'm signed in, I start my search for this specific article legal information relevant to the United Nations Convention on the um, law um, of the sea. I get uh, results. I'm searching the Central Discovery Index CDI uh, for this article, and I want to fine tune my search because this specific article uh, is published every year. Um, so I want the specific 2018 one, and uh, getting results, I'll take one here. And uh, we'll continue with requesting this specific one, which I know is from 2018, and we can see the information um, that I found. Um, I don't have this locally accessible, so I'll use my resource sharing requesting option. The form is pre-populated. You're all familiar with that. The publication year is 2018. Um, page range, everything comes in, including my email. Uh, the patron that is requesting this, the form is pretty much ready to submit. So if you just go on and submit this, and of course, agree to the copyright terms. So I'll just submit this request. Um, so this is a request for, for an article that I know in my demo that uh, my Open University lender has. So expect the request uh, to go through. This is my Alma on the borrower side, the Alma University. And if I facet my requests, then I can see this new request that has come in, legal information relevant to the Convention of the Law of the Sea. And we see that it is already ready to be sent to the Open University. Um, actually, the Loki process already identified the Open University as a potential uh, lender. If I now repeat that same process, and this time I'm searching for the 2008, you see it is the same uh, article. Well, this one is from 2000. Uh, eight volume, so it's pretty much the same information. Only difference is the publication date. I will be redoing my search in Primo in the CDI, getting that article, but this time from 2008. Again, I know that my lender in my demo environment does not have this. Expect this request uh, to fail, and this will demonstrate how the looking process in Alma. Um, 
uses publication date information to identify electronic ownership of the specific article. So same information except for the publication date, which is 2008. Quickly doing this again, submitting this request, and let's take a look at what we have now in Alma. We we'll go back to Alma, refresh my task list, and we can see now that we have two requests. The first one is the one we saw before, it's from 2018. And, we can, and that's the one that was uh, already ready to be sent to the Open University. With all the information of the article there, including the publication date, which is 2018, volume 2018. The other request, this one is the 2008 one. It is the same article information, except for the publication date, the volume, which is 2008. This one is ready to be sent, and this one is looking failed. So the looking process um, used its internal um, uh, link resolving tools and identified that the Open University does have the 2018 one, but does not have the uh, 2008 one. And therefore, um, for the 2008 request, Open University was removed from my ROTA and it remained there only for the 2018 um, article. Um, and again, this is because the lender owns this article in electronic formats. Therefore, the looking process was able to identify the specific um, article and make sure only uh, Open University is my ROTA when relevant. Okay, so this, uh, this demonstrates very quickly the uh, ALMA's ability to locate down to the article level when the lender has a resource that is owned electronically. Uh, of course, next we would like to go over into the lender side and take a look at how the lender will uh, process this request. So let's send the request over from the or I have not automated this so you can see the request being sent um, and now it's been sent and we can continue the workflow from here. So let's move over to the lender side, refresh my uh, open university task list, which is the lender. And here we have our request that has come in. You see this is the 2018 request with all the article information that has been sent through uh, in the uh, in the message, in the request message, this is 2018. All that remains for the lender to now do is access this article and prepare it for shipping. Prepare it for shipping means get a local copy of this article. Uh, for example, download the PDF or whatever other, it could be an image, could be any type of uh, digital file. Uh, the lender will have to um, download it locally and then upload it into Alma so that Alma can send that digital file. So using manager for note options, I can see that I have this. It's part of my collection that I have access to. Clicking on that shows me a view it like um, um, screen. We can see here, by the way, that the lender has access from uh, 2010. Um, as I told you, you know, when we started our uh, demo here. Um, so. Clicking on this will take me over to the resource itself. Another capability that was uh, recently, I believe it was the November release, uh, was released, is that Alma creates here a link that is down to the article uh, level. Uh, so it used to be a link that goes to the journal level, and then the resource sharing staff will still have to navigate down to the specific article that they need to fulfill. Um, now Alma creates here, and we don't need to configure anything for that to happen. Alma will configure an article level link here. Uh, of course, that depends on the vendor's platform. So where the vendor's platform allows article level links, uh, the links that Alma will create will access that specific article. And we're not then still the navigation within the journal will be required. Uh, in this example, um, I will be uh, clicking on that uh, link and um, it will take me down to my uh, specific article. So it's linking into that uh, UN uh, site we were at before. You can see that it's taking me uh, down to the specific article where I can just 
access it, uh, PDF, um, or read it right down to the article. So that makes it a quick um, access for the staff on the lender side. Uh, just manage the two options, click on the uh, uh, relevant link, and access that article when it is uh, possible. We will mention license issues. Um, of course, we would like to be sure as lenders that you're supplying something that you're allowed to uh, supply. Uh, we'll really talk about uh, that as well. But here's my uh, my article. Um, I was able to access it. I can save it. I can save it as PDF. In this example, I'm saving it as a doc. Um, I could download it as PDF. It could be an image, a JPEG. It could be a tip. It could be anything that you can supply digitally. Uh, there's really no uh, constraint in terms of what format of digital file um, you're creating. You just need to download it locally, as I'm doing right now. Save it uh, locally. Doesn't matter where you save it, uh, your own directory, directory somewhere uh, that is accessible locally to you. The naming convention doesn't matter. Um, so I can give it a name here um, just for our demo. Um, so example one, example two. Um, but you know, it is your own directory. You can clean it as you wish, daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, you can give it whatever names, as long as you save it locally, where the research sharing staff has access to this article. So quickly, quickly running on uh, through this. Uh, now that I, as lender, have that resource locally on my computer, all that remains for me to do is to actually uh, ship it away. And that I will do using the ship item digitally action. Um, so I'm back in my task list uh, and I'll ship digitally. A word about the email address. Um, what you're seeing right now is the email address that the lender sees. Um, if you notice the email address, we'll soon take a look at that again. On the borrower side, uh, this is not the email address that the patron has requested. The patron has requested uh, a local, in our example, it's going to be a Gmail address. We'll see that in a minute. Uh, the lender side is not exposed to that email. Um, so, uh, as many of you would not like to expose the patron email to the lender side, you can, of course, do that. In that case, the email address that the lender will see here is not the patron's email address. It is the email address of the resource sharing library um, that is requesting this. So we'll need to expose any uh, patron sensitive information. We can choose to expose that information. It could be useful in some scenarios, uh, but many of you will probably like to suppress that and not have the patron email exposed. So on the lender side, uh, this is my previous address. This is the uh, what I've configured for the resource sharing library on the borrower side. Um, if we go on and take a look at the uh, borrower request, uh, then we'll see that this is not the address that the patron has uh, requested uh, for fulfilling the request. So here's the borrower request. Um, and if we if we look at this request, we'll see the patron has requested a different email. That's the email uh, that I'm using for these demos, uh, and it has not been exposed to the uh, lender. So just be assured that uh, there's no uh, privacy issue here with patron emails being exposed. We'll see how you uh, make sure you configure that um, right after we complete this end-to-end -end, uh, workflow. Okay, so back here on the lender request, let's go on and fulfill this request. Uh, chip item digitally, as I mentioned, would be the action that uh, we'd like to do. So chip item digitally. In here, there's also a new screen that has been recently uh, deployed. Uh, easy to use. Um, all you have to do is uh, drag your file into this uh, screen for the file that we downloaded before. Um, here in my downloads uh, folder example to just drag it into my screen here and just have the file shipped this way and that's it. I as lender am done. The ship message has been sent to the borrower. The email has also been sent to the borrower. It's been sent to the user sharing library in this example. Uh, this is the long workflow, as I mentioned. 
So the request is now out of the active queue for the lender. You still see it as a ship visually request, but it is out of the active queue. And this is the email that the uh, library staff on the borrower side received. So we can see the attachment in here, uh, information about the uh, request itself. Uh, and this is where the library staff will take that um, uh, file uh, and save it locally on the borrower side in order to send it to the patient on the uh, borrower side. So lender uploaded on their end, that sent an email to the borrower, or it downloads on their end, and then uploads back into Alma in order to fulfill the request. So that's the article it's been seen. And in this longer workflow, the borrower side has to take that file and receive in my email and uh, save it locally, as I will do right now. I'll just put it in my uh, you know, downloads uh, uh, folder here, give it some local name again. If you put it anywhere, or give it whatever name, it uh, doesn't matter um, where you save it. It's your own folder. You can clean it as you wish. Um, daily, weekly, whatever. So now the library staff on the borrower side, we got that email. We got the request ID on that email. We got the resource itself. Now let's have Alma send that file to the patron and complete this request. So I, as borrower now, back on the Alma University, I find this request by the request ID that was on that email, and I would like to have Alma send this to the patron's um, email. I will use a new action that you don't yet have in your December release, but you will have in your January release that will enable me to um, upload a file here and have that sent to my um, patron in a secured uh, email, as we will see. So there's a new action here, upload file. It will enable me as the board staff to use that same type of interface we saw just before. Just drag my file in there. I did it before. That is uploaded to the Alma temporary repository and by doing send, the borrow request will also be completed and the patron will get their email with a link, a secure link to the um, document that I've just uh, uploaded now. So you can see the request is out of my active task list here on the borrower side. It is still there as a non-active request, so I can change the filter like we did on the lender side. Um, and see the request as completed with the file in here. As we'll see, I can resend that file again. I can view it, uh, show file. I as staff can see the file that I've uploaded. Um, if you know I've made a mistake, uploaded the wrong file. I can see what I've uploaded. Uh, it is still available for me for the staff uh, here on the uh, borrower side. Uh, and of course, the patron received. Uh, an email. Um, so here's our email. The notification item letter is the email that uh, has been received. And we can see that it is an email with secured uh, links that the patron received. This is an email to the patron. The out of the box email comes with uh, three authentication options, and the patron must authenticate in order to access that uh, file. Uh, it could be either using uh, a local L LDAP or one of the locally Alma managed uh, passwords. It could be uh, SAML, Shibboleth, Access, or CAS. Whatever authentication method the patrons use to access their Primo is the authentication method that they will need to use in order to access this file. So that only the patron that has requested this file can access it, and it requires authentication first. So um, pretty much all of you will configure this uh, email. Um, and hopefully we'll have time to take a look at how you do that. Uh, and classically, we'll simply remove those links that are not relevant uh, for you. So for example, if all of your patrons access through your Shibboleth system, you may remove the first and third links here. You leave only this second one. Probably want to change the terminology here. Patrons will understand what SAML users mean. 
uh, you could change it to say to access this file from here. If some of your patrons do have locally managed uh, passwords uh, and some have uh, SAML back, uh, based passwords, you need the first and second uh, link, you may reward it. For example, community users, click here, uh, students and staff, click here, and then leave both links in there and just guide the patrons. You can even go further uh, and you know, use all kinds of uh, XSL manipulations to have only one link show and have it show depending on the user group of your patron so that uh, some users have a link that takes them to the local authentication and some have a link that takes them to the uh, SAML authentication. Uh, you can do whatever you want with this uh, XSL. Uh, as you see, there are three authentication options here, local LDAP, SAML, and CAS. But we're still looking into the social authentication uh, option. There seems to be some gap there. Um, so that if your patrons are authenticating through a Google, Twitter, uh, Twitter uh, or Facebook link or using emails, uh, we still have to figure out. Uh, and I hope to have an answer soon as to how that can be done. Uh, but the intention is that that will also, if it's not yet possible, will be possible as well for those of you that are using social authentication uh, for your uh, patrons. So hopefully we'll have time to take a look at the configuring this uh, uh, this email. Uh, Moshe, so can I interrupt you for one moment, moment, please? Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, I forwarded you a chat question, and I'm just reminding anyone else, if you've got any questions, feel free to send it in the chat. It all remains anonymous. We won't tell anybody who sent what question. Okay, go ahead, Moshe. You should see it in the chat. Okay. Yeah, so I think I think I heard that the email authentication. Um, so uh, uh, the intention is that that will also be usable, um, and I hope to have more answers uh, as to how that can be done uh, real soon. Okay, let's take a look at that. So the page will click on that uh, link. Uh, I'll use the first link here, which is for the local uh, authentication. Uh, that will take the patron to a um, to a login uh, screen. Uh, which has your local, in this case, the Alma University, which is the patron's uh, uh, institution, the Alma University. Uh, we will take to a login uh, screen. Patron has to authenticate. And after using correct credentials, only then the patron will have access to that um, article. The number of accesses may be configured out of the box. It is two, two accesses. After that, the resource is blocked. Um, the resource remains out of the box for uh, 30 days and then is gone. If the patron does not make use of the resource in 30 days, it is removed. Uh, you can change that 30 day to up to 90 days to take a look at these configurations. Uh, but this is obviously done for uh, copyright uh, concerns. You can do a send file to patron like I'm doing right now uh, as staff to resend that email uh, to the Patron, um, that will reset that counter. So, for example, if the patron was for some reason not able to access uh, something uh, uh, that messed up, the patron got blocked after trying twice but does not have the resource, um, you can resend that email again. That will reset the number of accesses. Uh, or if you have uploaded the wrong file, the patron says, I got the wrong file in that email, you, you know, um, notice your. Uh, your um, mistake, you can upload the file again and have that sent uh, again with the correct file. It will reset the number of accesses uh, allowed uh, so the patient will still be able to access that um, file. Okay, so that's the end-to-end uh, -end, uh, workflow. Uh, just to recap, what we um, saw here in this, in this uh, demo, uh, we saw a scenario where the patient found an article in the CDI, in my example, request this. The local process identified the owner of this article uh, and sent the request to the correct uh, lender that has this article. The lender, using managed fulfillment options, was able to access that article, download it locally, and upload it to Alma. That's all the lender has to do. Um, Borer, in this example, got that email. Uh, with the request ID and the attachment, uploaded that attachment into Alma, 
and now the patron has the file um, as a link. That's the um, uh, workflow. As I mentioned, where it is ALMA to ALMA, ALMA is on both sides. The lender side can upload the file, and that will already trigger that email sent to the patron without requiring the borrower side uh, doing any action. Um, it will be seamless service for the patron. The patron will see the same email we demonstrated here uh, with the same links. Uh, it will have the logo of the borrower. It will require the patron to authenticate within their Primo credentials, just like we did right now. Um, internally, the link will be accessing a resource that is up, has been uploaded on the lender side, uh, but that is you know, totally internal uh, and it creates a much uh, quicker workflow because the moment that the um, lender has uploaded the file, the patron immediately has that uh, email, uh, even if it's if it happens when there's no library uh, staff, no staff in the library that can do the upload on the borrower side. The moment that the lender fulfills this, um, so for example, there are time zone differences, and the lender is fulfilling this when on the borrower side, there are no uh, there's no staff in the library at that time. Still, the patient will get that uh, uh, email and will have access. Um, also, in this scenario where the lender is sending direct uh, link and is not sending an attachment, this also removes uh, limitations on size. Um, obviously, if what Alma is generating is an email with an attachment, uh, there are size limitations to attachments that you can uh, put on an email. Um, so um, I believe it is a 10 mega limitation, um, which may be enough many times, but at times may not be enough. If the lender side is sending direct uh, and we're skipping this attachment, then there's no, pretty much no limitation on the size. The lender can upload anything um, and the patron will get that email with a link without um, you know, considering the size of that uh, specific resource. So there are many benefits to using that option. It is possible where borrower and lender are both ALMA and would probably be the recommended way to do that for, for these considerations that I just um, mentioned. Okay. What I uh, walk through uh, now is a full end-to-end -end, uh, workflow. The question that we mentioned and we have to get uh, back to is licenses. Um, the locate process identified that the lender has this article but it cannot identify that the lender is allowed to um, share this article as per the license that is attached to that um, um, collection portfolio. Um, this is something that the lender knows, but Alma can automate. And that's a feature that has been uh, now in the December lease uh, deployed, and I wanted to make sure we're all aware of it. Um, what can be configured, to configured, as we will demonstrate, is that when the lender receives a request that has been sent by some borrower, which could be an ALMA borrower or a non-ALMA borrower, doesn't matter, the lender got a request for something that the lender owns electronically. Configuration on the lender side can be set to automatically reject this request if the requested article is linked to a collection or portfolio that is not allowed for resource sharing. This, of course, will not waste the lender's time on reviewing this request and uh, um, no noticing that it's not allowed. It will um, make the road on the border side move quicker because pretty much minutes after the request has been sent to the borrower, it will automatically uh, be rejected and move on to the next uh, partner on the borrower's road up. Um, so it will make everybody happy. And this is what uh, that would look like. I will do the same process again um, requesting that same article from 2011, which I know again my lender has because it is after 2010. Uh, but this time I've changed the configurations on the lender side and I've uh, set it up so that um, I'm not allowed to share this specific portfolio. Um, and as we will see, it will get um, automatically rejected. So I'm again going through the process of uh, finding this in CBI. Uh, looking for this uh, um, article, um, I will be searching for the uh, 2011 uh, one like we did before. 
to find that article and request it just as we did before. Uh, so these are my uh, CDI search results. Um, and I do not have this locally, so I get the research sharing um, option, pre-populated form, 2011 is the publication year. Just as we did before, I, all I have to do is just submit it and read to the copyright terms. That's it, we have a board request, and as we saw before, it will be successfully located against my lender, because it is after 2010. Uh, so the open university will have a request. Now let's pass it and look at this new request. It is ready to be sent to the open university after a successful locate. So just go on and descend and have it sent away to my open university lender. And I'll refresh my lender's task list and I can see the request. That's it for the new request. There is my new request. And you can see it is already pending auto reject. That happened automatically. Uh, and again, what happened is that Alma identified automatically that there's a license that does not allow this to be uh, shared. So it is triggering an auto reject process. It has a few seconds delay. So it is triggered automatically. But you will see for a few seconds the status of pending auto reject. It means that Alma identified already that this should be rejected. It will trigger that reject in a few seconds. So here's our article information as has come in. This is from the Law of the Sea Bulletin. Remember, that's um, the journal that um, we were requesting from. If I look at this specific um, portfolio uh, that is owned by my CE uh, journals collection, So let's take a look at that collection. Uh, we can see the license terms and it's the Simaski license type one. That's the license that this collection is uh, linked to. And this has a license terms that says interlibrary inter loan electronic is prohibited. And Alma has a rule that's been configured with a rule that identifies this specific uh, um, rule and says you cannot fulfill this request. This is why that pending auto reject happened. Now the way this is configured here is that on my resource sharing library, here on the lender side, if you take a look at the resource sharing library, we see that there is an option to say reject request when all the electronic available. That's not new. What is new is the ability to set up rules. Uh, and these rules can be sensitive to the license uh, terms. So if I just click reject, it will reject everything. If I then create a rule, and this is the standard the way that- Moshe, I'm just giving you a 15 minute warning and I'm in the process of forwarding you another question. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so this these are rules. Um, you know, they're the structured, the standard way that Alma rules are structured. So there's an input here that says, if the license term, the inputs are license terms. Uh, so uh, if the license term, uh, interlibrary loan secure electronic transmission is prohibited, then the reject is set to true. And this tells Alma that if the resource is linked to this, uh, to a license that is of this type, um, then uh, uh, the request will be auto rejected as we uh, just saw. That's how this rule is uh, configured. Um, you can use different uh, terms from the license um, to create different tools here. So you can have more complex rules. I used a very simple rule here that just said, just look at one term, but you can create more complex uh, terms. And you can see that the request, while we were talking, the request that automatically rejected or the uh, pending auto reject um, was uh, was activated and the request was rejected on the lender side and of course also on the uh, borrower side. So again, you can create more complex rules 
if you are using different terms of uh, use, uh, that's my request. Um, and we can see that it's moved on to another partner, which is the rapid ILL partner. Um, let me take that back in case you didn't notice that. Uh, so the request is still ready to be sent, but it moved on to another partner, which actually demonstrates the scenario where I requested this article, I sent it to another consortial a lender, another one of my uh, of my peer-to-peer uh, -peer partners that is part of my network. Uh, but that lender is not allowed to fulfill the request. The request was automatically rejected by that lender. And then based on my ROTA, Alma continued automatically on to send it to Rapid. And so now the request will go to a broader uh, um, community of potential lenders, one of which may have this resource that is um, requestable so, uh, and is shareable. Um, so I can use this for my peer-to-peer -peer partners, and if none of them can have the resource, this demonstrates how to move on to a wider network, such as the Rapid ILL um, network. Okay. Um, so let's see, it's a question that came through the uh, chat. Let's see, try to take a quick look at that. Um, so are there limits to who can send a download uh, link to? Um, so the, um, if this question is about a specific email, the uh, email that the patron uh, receives, uh, then you know, that email requires uh, personal information. So it's not something that, that you can pull. It is only the patron with that specific credential that I can uh, access. So uh, I'm not sure about uh, what is meant by send the download link uh, to. Um, so perhaps you can clarify. Uh, let me try to, uh, if I haven't answered, um, refer to that specifically. Uh, we do have another 10 minutes. Um, so we can take a look at a uh, closer look at some of these configurations. Um, and this is the license check. So here's a closer look at that. Uh, these are the rules that we uh, saw before in that uh, demo. Um, as I mentioned, the uh, rule default is to reject. So um, if you want to reject only some of your lending requests, um, but not others, you may create two rules here, as I'm doing here. First one says reject if secure transmission prohibited. And the other one says others succeed. Uh, and so the, um, the others succeed rule will have no input parameters and will just be false. So the result will be that if uh, secure transmission is prohibited, like we saw in the uh, demo, the first rule will catch and will reject the request. If there is no terms of use that says secure transmission prohibited, because there is a catch all rule here that says do not reject in any other case, uh, and that's what false here means. And any other request that comes in for something that does not have that terms of use that says prohibited will be allowed. So, you know, you can play around with this depending on how you manage your license uh, records. Um, if you manage these terms of use and you want to create a default that says allowed or create a default that says not allowed, you can play around with the default rule that you create here uh, so that it can say reject false or reject uh, true. And by that, depending on how you manage your license and different uh, libraries uh, have different uh, methods to managing your licenses, uh, you can create you know, as simple rules as your licenses allow you to create. Okay, closer look at some configurations um, that we quickly refer to, but let's take a closer look at them. Uh, we mentioned the Loki process that is using U resolver, uh, link resolver abilities. Uh, that's a customer parameter, other settings parameter that you define on the performance config, other settings menu. It is called uh, RSU resolver locate. Setting this to true will enable Alma to use its link resolver capabilities to do that article level e resource uh, locate. 
Of course, you have to make sure that the locate profile that is assigned to the partner is not set to ignore electronic resources. If the locate profile is ignoring electronic resources, then of course, um, anything that is electronic will not even be attempted to be uh, searched. So if you do want to do to request electronic resources from lenders, uh, it is advisable to turn this parameter on to make sure that you do not have your local, your um, locate profiles set to ignore electronic resources. We talked about the uh, email. Many of you, not all of you, will probably not want to have your patron emails shared with the lenders. Um, very simply, you remove that option from the partner setup. There supports ADD address, that's what it means. It's direct delivery, uh, and it means uh, share the patron email with the uh, lender. Um, this is useful if you do not have these privacy uh, concerns and you do want the lenders to be able to send emails directly to the patrons. It does cut short the workflow and enable the lenders to send emails directly to the uh, patrons. Uh, but for that purpose, of course, they have to have the uh, patron email. So if for privacy concerns, you do not want to do that, it is advisable to turn this off. Uh, whenever your lender is an ALMA institution, you can turn it off and still benefit from the short workflow uh, that has the email directly sent to the patron. So if your ALMA uh, lender, uh, if your lender is an ALMA institution, there's absolutely no reason for you to uh, uh, tick this and select this and share your patron email. Uh, ALMA will be able to forward the uh, email directly to the patron even if it is not shared with the lender, because as we mentioned, there's internal ALMA processes uh, on the borrower side that uh, identify that the lender has uploaded the file and internally ALMA fetches that file and creates that email for the patron from the borrower side. So it does not need anything to happen on the lender side. So uh, for ALMA to ALMA, absolutely no need to turn this on. Um, you can still have the short workflow by having the lender configured to do uh, direct linking. And this is how the lender will configure that. Uh, here on my lender side, um, I'm configuring in the fulfillment config, the uh, digitization and copyright rules. And here I can configure a rule that says, if the request type is a lending request, then apply it as a link. Here I as lender can set up the number of accesses that is allowed, and that's pretty much all I need. The result of this will be that the workflow will be the short flavor of the workflow. When the lender does the upload, that triggers ALMA on the borrower side to send an email to the patron um, that has a link to that uh, file. Even though the lender does not have the patron uh, email, it is the ALMA on the borrower side that is uh, triggering that, uh, that email. So all you have to do is configure that uh, rule um, and you get the shorter uh, workflow. Of course, if you send an attachment, then you have the option to configure that rule uh, to be an attachment. As we mentioned, it makes the workflow longer. It has limitation in terms of the size of the file that you can upload as an attachment. So if you have ALMA on both ends, it is advisable to use the uh, link option um, and make the quick workflow. Just two last words, we're almost uh, out of time. Uh, a few more configuration switches. Um, these are done on the borrower side and enable the borrower side to fine tune the workflow on the borrower side. Uh, we uh, demonstrated a process where the uh, lender sent a file in an attachment and obviously the borrower side had to have a mediated process of uploading the file and having it sent to the patron. If the link option is used, um, then the email, as we mentioned, is sent automatically uh, to the patron. You can still turn that off for whatever reason you want to do that. Uh, that would be the parameter that you do. That will make Alma never send an email to the patron automatically and always require that staff go in and click send file to patron. Some libraries uh, prefer that. Uh, so that they can view the file and make sure that the lender has supplied the correct article and make sure it's in good condition, et cetera, before manually sending this on. The default is to have this automatic and 
if you not too hard to touch this, and that of course would be what we would recommend as the workflow to do it, uh, the default, which is true automatic. The number of uh, views I mentioned, the default is two. Uh, on the borrow side, you can control this using this parameter. Um, and the cleanup days, after how long the file will be automatically removed. Uh, the default is 30 days, you can change this, but you cannot set this to more than 90. I uh, will never retain files that are um, more than 90 days in its temporary repository. It is an internal uh, temporary digital file repository that Alma has for you to process these document delivery requests. So it is not um, related in any way to anything you're, you're doing in terms of managing digital um, um, files in Alma. Uh, it is a separate repository only for document delivery, and it is routinely cleaned up uh, by Alma. Every 90 days, um, files get removed. Okay, we do not have time to go through the uh, um, um, configuring the email itself. Uh, we'll send these slides through. Uh, there is some um, information here about configuring the file, including some uh, examples of that. But we're pretty much out of time, so I'd just like to recap very quickly for the last minute that we have. Uh, we took a look at two uh, workflows. We demonstrated the longer uh, workflow um, request sent. Uh, we took a look at how the locate can be fine-tuned to identify the correct article. We saw how the lender, when it is Alma, can auto-reject requests that come into something that I'm not allowed as per my license terms to share. Um, if it is Alma, I can ship uh, uh, the file and include an email. If it is not Alma, then whatever they do, it will send access somehow to the Alma borer. Uh, in this case, the library staff on the borer side will upload that file. That will trigger the email uh, for the patron. And that's the shorter workflow that we've not demonstrated. Uh, but in terms of the steps, it's the same. The lender got the same request, everything is the same. The upload action simply triggered that email automatically uh, without requiring those additional um, steps. So we're right on time. Um, if there are any other questions, uh, we can take another minute perhaps to uh, answer. And if not, then you know, thank you. And I hope you'll find this information useful. Okay, thanks a lot, Moshe. Some really nice stuff. We'll be posting the recording, as we stated, on the Knowledge and Webinar page. We'll be sending out to a list the notification that we've posted it. And we hope to see you in our future sessions. Have a great day. Bye-bye.